Thank you for staying with us on the newsroom. Former Minister of Environment Amina Mohamed will continue in her role as the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations. According to the UN, Mohamed's leadership helped advance the conceptual shift of, from the UN that member states called in for adopting the Sustainable Development Goals. Prior to her appointment in 2017, Mohamed served as Minister of Environment in Nigeria, where she stirred efforts on climate action and efforts to protect the natural environment. The National Population Commission, NPC, has announced that it has finalized plans to conduct the first digital population census in Nigeria in May 2022. The chairman of the commission, Nasir Isakwara, made this known after paying a courtesy visit to Kaduna State Governor Nasir Elbafai on Monday. Giving details about the exercise, Kwara explains that digital technology will help to ensure that the nationwide survey was reliable and credible. He, however, revealed that the exact date of the exercise is awaiting approval by President Mohamed Buhari. As Poland grapples with the first wave of COVID-19 pandemic, the country's total number of coronavirus-related deaths surpassed 100,000 on Tuesday. According to the country's health minister, the most recent daily tally showed that 493 people had died, bringing the total death toll to 100,254 deaths. Meanwhile, around only around 63% of Polish adults are fully vaccinated against COVID-19, which is one of the lowest levels in the EU. Lagos, Kano and Abia states are listed as the biggest beneficiaries of the federal government survival fund. Minister of State for Industry, Trade and Investment, Miriam Kachagom, disclosed this while all states of the federation have received varying levels of the 75 billion naira survival fund with its different schemes. Eventually, each state will soon receive a minimum of 1.7 billion naira cumulative from all the schemes. Katagom also revealed that Lagos, Abbey and Kano states had crossed the bar with Lagos reaching over 2.5 billion and Kano with over 2 billion naira respectively. The federal government through the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Niyi Adebayo, has assured manufacturers of its support to enable them to get good returns on their investments. The minister who gave the assurance pointed out that although many manufacturing companies are battling shortage of foreign exchange, the federal government was doing everything to assist them access forex, particularly for the importation of machineries. He maintained that the ministry would continue to assist manufacturers to remove any identified bottlenecks that could impede their production process, especially with respect to the ease of doing business. In international stories, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is under fresh scrutiny following reports that more than 100 members of his staff were invited to a garden party at his official residence at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Johnson, who won a landslide victory in the 2019 election, has faced intense scrutiny after a video emerged showing his staff laughing and joking about a Downing Street party during the 2020 Christmas lockdown. The news marks the latest of a string of alleged gatherings held by the government officials over the past two years that broke their own pandemic rules. In sports, Nigeria and Egypt will face up at the Stade Room de Adjia as both sides aim to begin their 2021 Africa Cup of Nations on a positive note on Tuesday. While the Eagles, who finished third at the 2019 edition of the football showpiece in Africa, will be seeking their fourth title, the Pharaohs will look to conquer the continent for a record extending eighth time. The rivalry between the two sides dates as far back as 1960 when Nigeria secured a 2-1 friendly victory in their first encounter at the National Stadium, Lagos. That's all on the newsroom. Thank you for watching. I'm Simisola Adigun.